Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Harvey High School's production of Three Japanese Ghost Stories. For the safety of our performance, flash photography is not allowed. Please, take this moment to turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. Now, don't be scared, and please enjoy Three Japanese Ghost Stories. Consider the cat. Those as well, side by side with humans, for thousands of years. Still, it cannot be thought of as domesticated, not like the dog. No, with the cat, something remains that is always mysterious. In Western culture, the cat is thought of to be the familiar of witches, and the medium through which they cast their spells. And in Japan, too, the cat is thought to have supernatural powers, powers which are associated with the force of the night. Prince Heisen of the Nabashima family would have done well to remember this on that fateful day long, long ago. Is it true that it was your cat that killed the golden peacock, the favorite of Princess Otoyo? Yes, Your Majesty. I most profoundly regret it was. Then the cat must be immediately put to death. And as for you, your estates will be confiscated. Your children will become servants in my household. And you, yourself, will be banished from our lands for the rest of your life. But your majesty- Silence! I do not give you permission to speak. I have no desire in hearing any of your miserable excuses. Be grateful it is only the cat I am sentencing to death. I am grateful, your majesty, most grateful. And it is not for myself, nor for the sake of my children, that I would speak. But it is out of concern for the well-being of your most gracious personage. What do you mean? It is the cat, your majesty. It is an evil and wicked animal, and I fear it will do some great harm. Nonsense! Have the animal destroyed at once? Destroyed? Destroyed? You think you can destroy me, Prince Hyden? It is I who will destroy you. You and your whole household, if you dis- You can stop now. The cat appears to be quite dead. What a dreadful animal. It was terrifying. The man was right. It must have been a demon. Demon or not, whatever it was, it is no longer a danger to any of us. I hope you are right. But given what has happened, I would, my husband, beg you to rescind your orders against this person and their family. As you wish, my lady wife. Thanks to my wife, I will not punish you. But I wish to never see your face again. Now be gone before I change my mind. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you. What do you make of this whole matter, Chief Counselor? As His Majesty has noted, the cat is dead. later, when the prince and princess were in the garden. 
The evening air is quite pleasant tonight, perfumed with the fragrance of flowers. For you, my love. What's wrong? You seem upset by something. It is nothing, my lord. Come, you can tell me. As I said, it is nothing. Just this strange feeling, as if something were watching us. There's no one here. I know, but ever since that incident with the cat, I have felt as if there was something evil nearby, watching and waiting for its moment to strike out at us. Don't worry, my princess. The cat is dead. There's no way it can hurt us. I suppose not. There, you see? Besides, you're more beautiful than the rarest of these flowers. And certainly no harm can come to one as beautiful as you. Now embrace me. It's time to go inside. It's getting dark. Beauty, I am afraid, is no protection against the powers of evil. And the cat, having killed Otoyo and drunk her blood, exchanged the shape of its body for hers. Toya, what are you doing here? It's late. I couldn't sleep, and I was lonely. But how did you get past the guard? Oh, I'm afraid I must tell you that the guard was fast asleep. I hope you don't punish him too severely. No. What are you doing? Just a little bit of blood every night, my love. Just a little bit of blood that way you will grow weaker day by day. Day by day you will grow weaker and weaker until you die. A slow, painful, and miserable death. And day by day, the prince did grow weaker and weaker. Council grew increasingly concerned about his master, and finally he decided to send for the finest doctor in all of Japan. I don't know why you went to all the fuss and bother sending a doctor for a doctor. It's just a summer cold, 
I'm sure he'll be better in no time at all. Don't you think so, my love? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Just a summer cold. And you know how terrible one of those can be. Nonetheless, Your Majesty, I think it's best for you to listen to what the doctor has to say. It won't hurt just to listen, will it? No, no, it won't hurt to listen. Your Majesties, proceed with your report. I'm afraid there is nothing to report. I can find nothing wrong with the prince other than he seems to be growing weaker day by day. I've never seen anything like it before. Are you sure there's nothing else you can tell me that would give a clue as to what is going on? Like what? For example, how is your majesty sleeping at night? Very strangely. When I first go to bed, I am exhausted, and I fall immediately into a deep sleep. But every night, I have this strange dream that Otoyo enters my room and sits by my bed. But that is impossible. There's a guard just outside the door to your bedchamber. Yes, which is why I know I'm dreaming, and it's not really happening. Go on, please. In this dream, Otoyo starts to kiss me, and suddenly she changes into this hideous monster, and she grabs my arm and my head, and then... And then... And then I don't remember anything until I wake up the next morning, more tired than when I went to bed. I see. What do you see? It's just a bad dream. That's all. Of course, of course. But now at least there is something I can do. I will mix a potion that will allow my prince to sleep the whole night through without dreaming. And after a few nights, he should be as good as new. But the doctor's medicine did no good, and the prince continued to fade away. Each night the prince dreams that his wife Otoyo comes and sits on his bed. But what if it isn't a dream? Your Excellency. What if something or someone really is coming into the room? But how? I myself see nothing. Nothing? Well, other than the occasional cat wandering through the halls. Nothing. I think tonight you and I should both keep the watch. And not in the hallway, but in here. Your Majesty, I was just telling the guard that tonight we will keep the watch in here while you're sleeping. Unless, of course, you're afraid that we will disturb you. Do as you please. I am so weak and tired that nothing can prevent me from falling asleep. If only it would be a peaceful and dreamless sleep. Nothing will disturb your sleep tonight, Your Majesty. Good night. Wake up, Esahaya. You must stay awake. Guard! Guard! What are you doing? Guard, wake up! Guard! Look, my love, everyone's asleep. How could that possibly have happened? Otoyo? Yes, my prince, it is me. Come to you yet once again. No, no, go away, go away. And every night, the chief counselor and others try to keep watch in the prince's bedchamber. Every time, they all fell asleep when the bell struck the middle hour. Finally, fearing that the prince might be under the spell of some evil demon, the chief counselor sent for the chief priest of the temple of Miu Iu. I'm telling you, there is something supernatural involved in all this. Once it is the middle of the night, no one can stay awake in the prince's chamber. I take it the prince is worse every morning. Yes, he grows weaker and weaker. I don't know how much longer he can last. You must help. How? Unless I know specifically what the problem is, I cannot tell what spells or prayers to you. But you must do something or the prince will die. Tonight, before the prince goes to sleep, I will purify his room and say the prayers for protection. I will keep watching him in the garden. Perhaps whatever it is that makes everyone fall asleep will not affect me out there. And perhaps I will see or hear something that will help us discover what is going on. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. I'm sorry. That is the best I can do. And so, the chief priest of the temple
pool of mu yu, purified the prince's bedchamber, said the prayers of protection, and went to walk in the garden below. What are you doing, young man? And why are you in the prince's garden? Forgive me, Your Reverence. I do not think anyone would be here at this late hour. My name is Iro Sora, and I am a soldier in the prince's army. But what are you doing here? I came here to wash my hands and purify myself. For what reason? Ever since my lord, the prince, took ill, I have always wanted to do something. But I am only a common soldier, and one such as I can either come into his exalted presence. So I do the only thing I can do. I come here every night and pray for the prince's recovery. Your loyalty to the prince is quite commendable. Thank you. The prince's sickness is a very strange one indeed. It is without the doubt of work of some sort of demon or goblin. But since no one can stay awake in the prince's bedchamber, when the bell begins to strike in the middle of the night, it is impossible to discover what sort of evil thing it is. I can. I know I can stay awake and protect my lord. And how do you know you could do that when so many others have failed? Well, I don't know. Not for certain. Maybe I too would fail, but I would like to have the opportunity to try. If there's anything I could do to help, I would gladly do so. I would even be willing to give my life. You are either very brave or very foolish. Maybe a little bit of both. I think tomorrow I will have a talk with the chief counselor about you. Your reference? If he is willing, then perhaps you will get your wish. But for now, good night. <clears throat> good night. Meet me here tomorrow after dark, and I will have your answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perhaps my prayers have been answered. standing watch in the prince's bedchamber? Who ever heard of such a thing? But your majesty, I assure you that even though he is but a common soldier, he is a man of uncommon loyalty and courage. Besides, what do we have to lose if we let him try? What do you think, Chief Counselor? You must admit, Princess, that we can no longer hope that the prince's illness is nothing more than a bad summer cold. As for me, I am fully convinced it is some kind of demon, and until we can discover exactly what kind of demon it is, there is no hope of helping the prince. But what good will this do? What assurances can you give that this boy will succeed when men far better than him have failed? None, Your Majesty. It is just a feeling I have. Listen to me, Your Reverence. Men and women live and die, but the rules that govern our lives are eternal. What happens to the social order of the world when we start making exceptions to those rules? But do you want your husband to live or not? Of course I do then I think we have no other choice than to let the soldier try. I don't know. Perhaps Satoyo is right. However, as for myself, I will agree to allow this young man to stand guard for one night. If he succeeds, then he'll be richly rewarded. But if he fails, if he fails then he must pay for his failure with his life. Either way, the integrity of this household will be maintained. What do you say, my lady? I say you should tell the executioner to sharpen his axe. And you, Rosen? If he agrees, then I agree. The young soldier agreed to the terms set by the chief counselor. You understand the terms of the agreement? Yes, Your Lordship. You know that you will forfeit your life if you fail to stay awake and discover exactly what kind of demon it is that is tormenting His Majesty? I understand, and I am fully prepared to risk my life for the sake of the Prince. Very well. We will sit up with you tonight to make sure that tonight is no different from any other night.
midnight. Wait. Now we will see if the demon dares to enter. It's happening. Try to stay awake, everyone. Try. Is everyone asleep? Chief Counselor, guards, Your Majesty, wake up. What's happening? I can barely keep my eyes open. Nothing seems to work. In that case, <clears throat> every time I start to fall asleep, I would twist the knife and the pain would keep me awake. And so, the faithful Ido Soto watched and waited as the hours of the night slipped by. Two hours passed the middle of the night, and still nothing. And then... And how does my lord sleep tonight? He is sleeping quite soundly, Your Majesty. Who? It's you. My lady? How is it that you are awake? when all the others have once again fallen fast asleep. My desire to sleep was just as strong as theirs, but I've managed to find a way to fight it off. Is that blood? A slight wound, nothing more. So that's how it is. You are a very loyal servant indeed. It is my duty to protect my prince. Well, I am here now. You can go to sleep like all the others. I will keep watch till the morning. I think it would be best if we kept watch together. Don't be silly. There can be no doubt now about your worthiness. When the morning comes, I will tell the chief counselor and priest how well you did. But for now, you should rest. Shut your eyes. Let your head rest upon your breast. Soon you will find refuge from all your trouble and pain in the wonderful world of dreams. Yes, my loyal soldier, go to sleep. Sleep. Now for you, my prince. I do not think it would be a good idea for you to lie down. You too might be tempted to fall asleep. I thought I told you to go to sleep. Indeed you did, Your Majesty. So? So I must humbly decline your most generous offer. There are only a couple hours of darkness left, and I think it would be for the best for the safety of the prince if we kept watch together. I underestimated you, Ido Soto. You may be only a common soldier, but there's something about you that is very noble. Your Majesty? And you are handsome as well. Even I find you most attractive. Most attractive indeed. I'm flattered that Her Majesty would think so. It is not flattering, my dear Edo. I cannot resist you. Do you dare raise a knife to the wife of the prince? I do not think my lady would speak to me the way you have done. What do you mean? I mean you are the demon who has been tormenting my lord. That's not true. Aren't you the one who has come into my lord's dreams every night? But they weren't dreams, were they? I don't understand what you are saying. Yes, you do! Stop! How dare you touch her like that? You should be put to death immediately. But this is not our lady. This is the demon that's been terrorizing the prince. Nonsense. It's the truth, I swear. I give you your choice. You can die honorably by killing yourself right now in front of me, or you can die like a traitor and be beheaded at dawn. Choose. If I must choose, then I choose the death of a warrior. However, before I do this, I ask that you awaken the chief priest so that he may bless me. There is no time for that. And how long must it take to awaken somebody? You know as well as I do that the chief priest is under a spell and that he cannot be woke until after dawn. And you? And me what? Aren't you under the same spell? Yet you're awake. Why is that? I... It is because you are not the chief counselor. You are the demon who has taken over his body. Wait, don't hurt me. My son, what are you doing? Would you strike a sleeping man? No, but I would strike a demon. I saw a demon like you. But if you strike me now, you will kill the body of the chief priest. Kill me, Ido. Better I should die than our prince may live. Quiet! Don't be a fool! For your prince, Ido. For the prince. And the chief priest, can you really kill him? Kill me, Ido. Kill me. I must do what must be done. You are very brave, Ido Soda, but now you must die. So you reveal it in your true form at last. And so, Ido Soda killed the demon cat and had its body burned. 
in a great fire. I'm sorry, my lord, but the princess is dead. Today is a day of great happiness and of great sorrow as well. Happiness, because my life has been saved. But sorrow, because I've lost the one I love most in this world. I owe you my life. You'll be richly rewarded for your loyalty and bravery. Thank you, Your Majesty. But yet there's one thing I do not understand, and that is why the demon did not jump into the body of the prince. I would not have been able to strike the body of my lord. That is because the body of the prince was too weak to contain the demon's spirit. If the demon would have taken over the prince's body, the strain would have killed the prince and the demon as well. And so, Ido Soto went on to become a lord in the land of the prince. And he did many other great deeds, but those are stories for another time. And in truth, none of them were quite so impressive as his victory over the vampire cat of Nabashima. catch enough fish so that tomorrow he could stay at home and rest. And for three days and two nights, Urashima cast his net into the sea. And for three days and two nights, he pulled his net in empty. Then, just as the sun was setting on the third day, the net was almost pulled from his hands. Urashima braced his legs against the side of the boat and grasped the net as firmly as he could. The little boat was pulled through the water at a great speed. But Urashima held up. His arms were aching, and his legs grew tired. But Urashima held up. Sweat was pouring from his brow, and blood was beginning to flow from the blisters upon his hands. But Urashima held up. Finally, after several hours when he thought he could hold on no more, and the boat was farther out to sea than it had ever been before, it began to slow down. And then it stopped. Urashima began to pull in the net. As he did so, he saw that he had snared a large, five-colored turtle, larger than any turtle he had ever seen before. Aha! Tomorrow my family will feast. My mother and father will eat like they have never eaten before. And the day after that, when the sun rises in the sky, Arashima the fisherman will stay at home and rest, safe upon the dry land. But just as he was about to pull in the net, the turtle spoke to him. Release me, kind fisherman, for I am older than old and still am not ready to die. 
I'm sorry, Grandmother Turtle, but for three days and two nights, I've been casting my net into the sea, and you were the only thing I've caught. Please, I'm begging you. No, it can't be. Tomorrow and for days to come, your meat must go to feed my family. And do Rashi hold out a knife? The cut will be quick and merciful. At least I can promise you that. And at the last seconds, the turtle cried out. Spare my life, and I promise you will not regret it. Why? What could you possibly do for me? I am old, older than you could possibly ever know, as old as time itself, and I could give you all of the time you desire, all of the time you need to learn all of the things there are to know. You could do all this for me? More. And so, Urashi sets the turtle free. Where are you going? Do not worry, I will return. Tired from his labors, Urashima laid down in the boat, fell asleep, and had a dream. In his dream, he imagined that the turtle had changed into a beautiful woman standing on the water. Who are you? asked Urashima. My name is Ishan and I am one of the immortals. I saw you from my home far out in the ocean and wanted to come for you, for I have never seen a mortal I liked as much as you. So I changed myself into a turtle, that I might swim through the waters to reach you. But then you caught me in your net and were set to kill me. I had no idea you were an immortal. Please do not be angry with me. Begged Urashima, bowing before her on his knees. Speak tenderly to me, and I will forgive you. Say you love me, and I will return your love a thousand times. Say that you will come and live with me in my home, and I will give you all the things I have promised and more. For I will love you for as long as the sun and moon both do shine. And she leaned over and kissed Urashima. And Urashima woke from his dream with a start to find he wasn't dreaming. And Urashima, who had never seen anyone so beautiful in his entire life, said, yes, I will go with you. Then set your sails and shut your eyes, and soon we will be there, my love. Once there was a man who dreamt he was a butterfly, and when he awoke, he could not decide whether he was a man who dreamt he was a butterfly, or a butterfly who was dreaming he was a man. See the sunlight shining upon the town? We will soon be there, my love. Look, there are the New Year's kites. The New Year? Have we been traveling so long that it is already the New Year? I thought no more than a few hours had passed. Here in the land of the immortals, every day is like the start of a brand new year. But why? Wait, and you will see and understand everything. place Urashima had ever seen. Every day was like an entire year. Each day, until the sun was high in the sky, was just like spring. Every morning is like spring, and like spring, one never grows tired of it. From noon until late in the day was the perfect summer. Is there anything else in all the world as perfect as a summer's day? And from the end of the day until the last of light, there was a cold, crisp fall, the harvest moon rising in the evening sky. The sun shines, crops ripen, soon it will be time for the harvest. And from the start of night until the dawn broke upon the horizon, there was winter. It was all more beautiful than Arashima could have ever imagined. But, best of all, Arashima was in love. Here, my love, for you. But Arashima, why? Because it is beautiful, almost as beautiful as you. That's very sweet, but there are so many flowers here. Every day, fresh flowers. Why would you waste your time picking just one of them? But this one is for you. Yes, but in a few minutes it will be sundown and then it will die. Until then? Yes. Never mind. I won't pick any more flowers. Snow falling in the moonlight. 
there anything more beautiful? Ishan, Ishan, come quickly, the snow is falling. In the land of the immortals, the snow falls every night. Now shut the door and come to bed. No, no, come and see. It makes everything so still and peaceful. Put on your shoes and coats and we'll take a walk in it. Not tonight. Maybe tomorrow. There will be more snow tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then the day after, or the day after that, or any of the days to come. For we have all of time before us. What does that mean, all of time? It means I will be able to keep my promise to love you for as long as the sun and moon both do shine. You're sure you do not want to take a walk in the snow? The land of the immortals finally gave Rashi all the time he never dreamed of having, to do all the things he never dreamed of doing. He studied the birds and how they flew. And he even invented a machine for flying. Isha, come and see. It's very pretty, but what is it? It is a prototype for a flying machine. It shows that if I could find some way to apply power to the blades, then man could fly. But if you want to fly, you can just summon one of those dragons. They'll take you wherever you want to go in no time. But with this, I wouldn't need dragons. I could fly by myself. And why would you want to do that? Because... 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 Just to be able to say I can do it. Sometimes, my love, you make no sense whatsoever. And after inventing his prototype for a flying machine, Urash took up painting. Now what are you doing? Painting. Is my face really that round? My eyes that big? And look, you've painted the bamboo leaves much too green. I paint things as they should be, not as they are. But why? Because when he uses his imagination, the painter sees into the true inner nature of what he paints. His mind is like the mind of God. Then why paint it all if God does it better? Because if I can understand all there is to know about something, then I should be able to discover the answer to the mystery of life. But everything changes. Even here in the land of the immortals. The flowers bloom, we look, then they fade and fall. Don't be sad, my love. What does the mystery of life have to do here in the land of the immortals? Out there, people live and die. But here, we don't have to worry about the mysteries of life, because we have life forever. unending procession of the days began to weigh heavily upon the poor fishermen. What are you looking at? The cherry trees. Yes, aren't they beautiful? Not if they blossom every single day. Day after day after day after day. What do you mean? I mean, every morning there are fresh cherry blossoms and every night it snows. Isn't it wonderful? No, when it happens all the time, it is no longer special. It just is. I don't understand. What about our love? What about it? Is it too no longer special? Is it just is? No, no, you will always be special to me. For as long as the sun and moon both do shine? For as long as the sun and moon both do shine. That's good. Because since I have taken a vow, I can love none other than you for all of time. And I promise I will never love anyone else but you. But... But what, my love? But I miss my world, the world of the mortals. Tell me what you miss most and I will get it for you. I will summon one of those dragons and you will have whatever you want in no time. No, no, what I miss no dragon can bring me. What do you miss that can't be brought to you? Time. Time? I miss a world in which time appears to have some meaning, 
A world where everything isn't perfect, where after a long cold winter, the fresh cherry blossoms are indeed a miracle, not something that happens every single day. I want to go home. I want to see my family. I want to dazzle the world with my flying machine. One's hopes and wishes to return to one's home, they're like moths trying to reach the light. A man's longing carries within itself the seeds of his death. And what about me? You can come with me. No, I can't come with you. For where you're from, the air is too dirty and heavy. The days are too long and the nights too short. There is so much noise and the colors are so weak and pale. I cannot survive there. And what about our love? For I have promised to love no other, for as long as the sun and moon both do shine. Do not worry. I cannot imagine living my life without you. I only want to go for a short while, and then I will return. I promise. But what if something happens to you? What could happen to me? Out there, anything can happen. People get sick, they have accidents, and they die. Nothing is going to happen to me. But when you return, you are not going back to the life you left so long, long ago. So long ago? It has only been a few weeks, three or four months at most. Time out there is not like time in the land of the immortals. Oh, yes, everyone will be a little older, and it will probably be winter instead of summer. But aside from that, Things will not have changed much. It is just a little fishing village, the place where I am from. Things have not changed there in hundreds of years. But how will you get there? In my boat, of course. Isha, what happened to my boat? The wood's all rotted. It has totally fallen apart. It is like it has been sitting here for years and years and years. The wood from your boat was from the mortal world. So? So it rotted away. Where are you going? To cut some trees. I will have to build a new boat. And Ishan saw that he was determined to go, and that she could not hold him there. The moon that has risen always goes down again. It disappears. Wait, my love. There is no need for you to build a new boat. I will take you. And before they left, Ishan gave to Urashi a beautiful wooden box. To return, strike this box three times. Wait, listen carefully. Under no circumstances, no matter what happens, must you open it. If you do, you will ruin everything for both of us, and my love for you will have been in vain. But why? What's inside? Something of immense value, yet no substance whatsoever. But what is it? That I cannot tell you. It is just another mystery you will have to live with. But why are you giving it to me at all? Because it is yours. Mine? Just remember. Do not open the box. I will remember. And Ishan transformed her shape once again into that of a great turtle. And she carried Rashi on her back across the sea in the air to the land. of the mortal. Urashima found his way down to the beach, but nothing was as he remembered it. Instead of the small wooden hut to the fishermen, there were these monstrous buildings made out of some kind of gray stone and hundreds of people going in and out of them. Finally, Urashima saw a building of the kind he remembered. Going up to it, he found a sign on the door. National Treasure. As unbelievable as it may seem to the modern apartment dweller, in crude huts such as this, the primitive fishermen used to live. At one time, dozens of these huts cluttered this beach in an unorganized and unsightly fashion. 
while Urashi was contemplating the meaning of this statement, an old man selling toys came walking along the beach. Whirly gigs, whirly gigs. Pardon me, sir. Would you like to buy a whirly gig for one of your children? That is my invention. Where did you get it? Please, sir, it's just a toy, something for a child to play a with. A toy? That is not a toy. That's the basis for the invention. Oh, the dragon is going to kill us. Calm down, calm down. It's all right, it's all right. It's just a helicopter. A what? A helicopter. You know people fly in it? They fly? Of course. That one's probably taking businessmen to a meeting or tourists to the airport. I must see dozens of them every day. Dozens? Of course. Dozens of these machines that fly every day? Yes, don't you? Here. Are you all right? Tell me, do you live around here? I used to when I was younger. I lived in a hut not unlike this one over here. But that was a long, long time ago. Then you were a fisherman. Oh, yes, sir, like my father before me and his father before him. And so on and so on, as far back as anyone can remember. But what happened? Where have they all gone? The water became polluted, the fish died, and most of the fishermen moved away. Now only this one hut remains, a national treasure. A national treasure? That's what they call it. This has all happened so fast. It has only been a year at most since I was last here. A year? And now my family, how will I ever find my family? Perhaps I can help. I still see many of the families who used to live around here. My name is Ito. Ito? I knew a family named Ito. And your name? Urashima. No, that name doesn't sound familiar. But everyone knew my family. Urashima, you say? Yes. I remember my grandfather saying something about an Urashima. A family of great fishermen, he said. Yes, that is true. But where are they now? Now? Well, now they are nowhere. One day, the last son of the family got lost at sea, and as a result, the family line died out. Died out? But that was over a hundred years ago. A hundred years? Dead leaves rot and crumble. Blown by the wind, they're the dust of time. Well, I've got to be going. Are you going to be all right? What? Yes, I will be fine. Thank you. sky darkened and the rain began to fall, Urashi walked down to the beach. As he stood by the water, the waves overlapping his feet, he brought out the box that he shouldn't have given him. When you are ready to return, strike this box three times. But listen carefully, under no circumstances should you open it. If you do, my love for you will have been in vain. At the edge of the sea, a man stands, holding a wooden box. The contents of this box are a mystery, but all he knows is that if he opens it, he, as well as she whom he loves, will lose everything. But inside the box, he knows is the answer to the mystery, the mystery of what has happened to the world he used to know. And it is the nature of man to seek the answer to every mystery, even if he must risk all he has in doing so. And so, Urashima opened the box. No, my love, no! A gray mist emerged from the box and circled about his head. Over one hundred years of mortal time settled upon Urashima's shoulders. And far out to sea, helpless to do anything, he shunned the immortal, who had vowed to love no other for as long as the sun and moon both do shine, watched Urashima die. And his bones turned to dust. Weep for me, I who am now trapped forever without love in the eternity of time. Haiku. River water touch. 
the last of all that has been, first of what will be. as the morning dew is the peonies in your garden, so you are to me. Please, sir, this is not proper. We should not be alone like this. You are not afraid of me, are you? It is not you that I am afraid of. It is my own feelings for you that I fear. Sue you. Shinzaburo. Shinzaburo! Where are you? It's time to go. I have to leave. No, no, you mustn't. Shh, my love. I'll visit you again. When? Soon. In a few days at most. I'll ask the doctor to bring me. 
Be warned, if you not keep your promise, then I will surely die, for I have given myself to you, my love. And if you prove unfaithful, then I will not be able to go on with my life. Your life is safe with me. Shinzaburo, where are you? Soon, my love, soon. Ah, there you are. Yes, here we are. I'm afraid it's time for us to go. I have patience I must see. Please come again soon. We will. Are you ready, my young friend? Next time you come, you must bring me along. Why is that? Because I, I find that young lady and her servant. Very charming company. Ah, I see. Will you? Of course. Do you promise? I promise. But the doctor did not keep his promise. Please, mistress, you must eat something. It's been almost a week since you've taken anything and you barely drink any water. Why does he not visit me? He promised he would visit. Perhaps he has been ill, or perhaps the doctor has been busy, or perhaps... Yes? Never mind, my lady. Go on, say it. Perhaps he does not love me after all. No, I'm sure that's not it. I gave him my love, and now he dishonors me by staying away. I'm sure he loves you. How could he not love one like you? <coughs> You're a very kind young man. But I'm afraid Shinzaburo has proved faithless after all. Please, mistress. You must eat something. I can't eat. I want to lie down and go to sleep forever. Goodbye, Yone. Thank you for everything. Please, mistress, you mustn't do this. You must eat. Mistress? Sue you? Please don't leave me. You can't leave me. Sue you? you had not been dead more than a couple of days when the grief-stricken Yoni followed her mistress to the grave. They were buried next to each other at the temple of Shin Ban Zui In, their headstones standing side by side. When the doctor told Shin Zaburo that Suyu was dead, he was heartbroken. But how? They were both in perfect health when we last saw them. Some strange sickness came upon them suddenly and unexpectedly. They were gone before I even knew they were sick. Thank you for telling me, Doctor. Under the circumstances, I think it is good that you only saw Suyu that one time. How can you say that? You don't know what you are talking about. You're a young man, Shinzaburo. Soon you'll forget all about this. Time, as they say, makes all wounds heal. But time did nothing. Feel the pain in Shinzaburo's heart. <coughs> Finally, it was the seventh month, the time for the festival of the dead. That's the time many people in Japan believe the spirits of the dead wander the earth for a few days. Meals are prepared for them, lanterns are lit to mark their way. Shinzaburo all of these things, believing in his heart that the soul of Suyu would come back to him. That night, he sat upon the veranda in the light of the full moon, waiting for some sign of his lost love. Is that you? Forgive us, Master Shinzaburo. My mistress begs you to excuse this intrusion. Most happily is she forgiven. But how? Are you ghosts? My mistress has asked me to tell you that we would have come sooner, but it was not until today we found out you yourself were not dead. Dead? A few days after your visit, Dr. Yamamoto returned to tell us that you had perished most unexpectedly. Some kind of accident. My mistress was heartbroken and could no longer stand to live in the garden, surrounded by the Garden of Peonies, where you first declared your love for each other. So we moved, 
We found a small, narrow, and dark house near the village of Yanaka no Sasaki, near the temple of Shinbanzui Inn. And it was the doctor who told you I was dead? Yes. But it was he who told me that you and your mistress, my love, had both died from some mysterious ailment. He must have realized you were in love and did not approve. So he told both you and my mistress that the other had died. In that case, he must be punished. Truly the doctor is an evil man, but we should not waste our time or our thoughts on one such as he. The important thing is the wrong has been undone, and we are together once again. Yes, that is very true. Then why don't you take me into your arms and kiss me? morning, about an hour before the break of day. Mistress, mistress, it's time to go. You must hurry. Don't worry, Yona. I'm almost ready. But why do you have to leave? It's still night. Ever since my mistress left the house given to her by her father, we've had to work to support ourselves. Work? My lady has to work? Yes, if we're going to eat. But what do you do? Little things. Things that help us get by. What things? Such a lot of questions. What we do during the day is of no importance. It is nothing to do with you and me, except that now we must go and you must do nothing to delay us. Stay with me and you will never have to work again. In time, my love, we will be together forever and ever. But for now, you must be patient. Come, Yone, we have to hurry. Goodbye. I'll be with you again tonight. Look for me. Goodbye. Be here as soon as you can. <laughs> And every night thereafter, Suyu and Yone came to the house of the samurai. And each time, about an hour before the dawn, they hurried away. And every time, Suyu made the same promise. In time, my love, we will be together forever and ever. But until then, you must be patient. Now, Shinjiburo had a servant named Tomozo, who lived in a house with his master, on a, with his wife, on the ground of his master's estate. After a while, Tomozo grew curious as to why his master never went out at night, and why he spent so much time sleeping during the day. Another bottle of sake last night? And two cups? A friend dropped by last night. Another friend? My, what a lot of friends my master must have. You've had a friend drop by almost every night for the past two weeks. In fact, it has been every night for the past two weeks. So? So, so why don't you ever send for me? I should be the one who's preparing and pouring the sake for my master's friends unless Oh, so that's the way it is, is it? What do you mean? Nothing, Master. No, it's not nothing. I ordered you to tell me what you are thinking. Really, Master. After all, your friends are none of my business. And if you want to entertain your friends at night without me, who am I to say anything about your friends? <laughs> you will stop that stupid noise this instant and tell me what you are thinking. Friends, Master. I'm talking about friends, or maybe just a friend and what special friends they must be. I'll be sure to air out your cushions extra good today and puff them up extra special for tonight in case one of your friends stops by again. Enough of this. Be gone. And not another word about my friends. Yes, master. I'm going. Have a good evening with your friends. <laughs> That night, Tomozo could not sleep, for he kept wondering who his friend and his master was to be. He was pretty sure it was a woman. Finally, he could stand in the mystery no longer, and he crept up to his master's house to see for himself who she was. My love, you do not know what agony it is to be apart from you all day. It is not easy for me either, especially in that long, narrow, and dark house where I am forced to dwell. 
Then why won't you come and live with me? Be my wife. I have told you many times. Yes, yes, I know. And time will be together forever and ever. Yes. If only that were true, forever and ever, then it would be so easy to be patient. But we both know that life is all too short and that nothing is forever. Our love will be, I promise. Oh no, no, it can't be. Who's there? Ah! What's going on? What was that noise? Forgive me, Master Shinsaburo. I must have had a bad dream. He cried it out in my sleep. Are you all right, Yone? Yes, mistress, I'm fine, but we must go now. Go? But you just got here. Yes, Yone, don't be silly. We don't have to leave for a long time yet. Mistress, I'm very sorry, but I think it's best that we leave right now. All right, if you think it's really necessary. I do, I do. Will I see you tomorrow night? Yes, yes, I promise. Good night, my love. Until tomorrow. Master, Master, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Why shouldn't I be? Where are they? Where have they gone? Oh, who? What are you talking about? Those, those, those what? Those! I don't understand you. You're babbling. Calm down, Tomozo. Your master has no idea what you are talking about. Hakuwuru Yusai, at your service, Master Samurai. Welcome to my home, Master Hakuwuru. I know you to be a man of great learning. Thank you. But what is this? And why are you here with my worthless servant? Worthless? If you had seen what I saw, but then again, you must have saw what I see. I mean, see what I saw, didn't you? Quiet, Tomozo. Obviously, what you have seen is not what your master saw. It was not. No. Master Shinzaburo, as you can tell, Tomozo was a little bit alarmed by something he may have seen tonight. A little bit alarmed? I was terrified. Forgive me. Terrified. And because of that, he came to me for help. And what was it that terrified him? And why did he come to you and not to me? I think Tomozo himself should tell you if he could be calm enough for a couple of minutes. And so, Tomozo explained to his master how he had been able to sleep, wondering who this woman was who came to visit every night. How he had crept up to the house to try and get a look at her. So I tiptoed up to the screen, and just as you two were, uh, you know, kissing? I peeked around the corner. So now you know. Yes, but I'm afraid you do not. And what don't I know? It was not a lady you were kissing. Then what was it? When I peeked around the corner, there was not anyone there. At least not anyone living. There was just this mouth of the skull pressed against your lips. These long, bony fingers and arms wrapped around your neck. Arms with the rags of a decayed garment hanging You're off. You're crazy. I was terrified. I started to back away in horror, and then from out of the corner, this other one, even worse than the first, came at me. She was just this awful, ghostly skull she was, and that's when I screamed. So it was you who screamed. But why would Yone lie about that? I just managed to get away before she got to me. I don't believe you. You must have gotten drunk or dreamed the whole thing. Tomorrow, I will have you whipped. First for stealing my sake, and then for lying. No, Master, please, I promise, I saw what I seen. I mean, seen what I saw. Every night I've held Suyu in my arms. I think I know if she was a ghost or not. Not necessarily. You love her very deeply, and that will give her ghost great power over you. You are in great danger. Your very life is at stake. But when there is love between the living and the dead, the living must die. You must protect yourself. You must find out for sure whether or not your loved one is truly alive or dead. But this is impossible. Suyu is real. Listen, Shinzaburo, where does she live? In the village of Yanaka no Sasaki. That is not far from here. And if she truly is alive, then it should be easy to find her. If she is there, then you know that Tomozo was wrong and deserves any punishment you care to mete out to him. What? No, no! <laughs> but if you can't find her, if I can't find her, come and find me. I will help you protect yourself from her ghost. Discouraged and heartbroken, he began his journey home. Along the way, he stopped to rest at the temple of Shin Ban Zui'e. Honorable Samurai, welcome to the temple grounds. Is there anything I can get for you? 
Some water or tea? No, but thank you. Perhaps something to eat? Again, thank you, but no. Forgive my asking, but you seem to be troubled by some great matter. Perhaps I can be of some service? Or maybe one of the priests? Indeed. There is something that weighs heavily upon my mind, but I do not think that you can help. Perhaps not. But why don't you tell me what it is that is bothering you? Sometimes it is good just to talk about these things. I have been to the village in search of two women I know, but no one seems to have ever heard of them. I know many of the people who live around here. Maybe I know them. What are their names? The lady, Suyu, and her servant, Yona. The lady, Suyu? So you have heard of them? No, I never actually met them. But sad to say, sir? I do know where you can find them. Where? Where can I find them? Right over there. But that's a graveyard. Yes, that's why I said I was sad to say I know where they are. That plain stone over there, the one with no markings on it, that is Yone's grave. And the one next to it, the one with the carving of a lantern with a bamboo pole on the, with the peonies on top, that is Lady Sue's grave. Are you all right? So that's what Yone meant when she lived in a small, narrow, dark house. She meant a grave. Sir? I have to leave. It's getting dark, and my life is in danger. Thank you for your help. And Shinobu ran home as fast as he could. Tell me what I must do to protect myself, Master Yasai. First of all, you must wear this golden Buddha around your neck, next to your heart. Second of all, cover all doorways, entrances, and even the cracks into your house with these strips of paper. Written on them are sacred words. As long as one of these covers every possibility way into your home, the ghost will not be able to enter. Quick, Tomozo, begin covering everything up. Tomozo. Yes? Remember, the ghost could not harm you. They may try to frighten you to help them gain entry into the home, but they are powerless to truly hurt you. You must not believe them, no matter what they say. Do you understand? I understand. But maybe it'd be a good idea if I had one of those golden Buddhas as well. That won't be necessary. Besides, you'd probably just sell it for the money. What? How could you say such a thing? Easy. Now start sealing the house. Sealing the house and wearing the Buddha next to your heart? These are easy tasks. The hard part will come when you hear Suyu's ghost crying. You must not listen to her. Her spirit will only be at rest when either your refusal to listen to her drives her back to her grave for good, or when you, yourself, are dead in her arms. And so, Tomozo helped to seal his master's house, then left to seek refuge in his own quarters. All alone, Shinjiburo waited for night to fall, and Suyu's and Yone's arrival. I want you to come inside to me. Then I won't come inside to you. Yone, push aside the screen. Ah! Yone, what's wrong? Are you all right? Mistress, the entrance has been sealed against us. Shizuburo, what have you done? Why have you barred our way? I have not barred the way of any person. If you are Suyu and Yone, then you can enter. But I am Suyu. Then you can enter. The sacred text will not prevent you. It is as I feared. The servants saw too much. You have been betrayed. No, it's not possible. Quick, take on the house. There must be a way to get in. An unguarded door, a window, even a crack in one of the walls will do. Hurry, Yone, hurry. Yes, mistress. Shinzaburo? Shinzaburo, answer me. Please, Sui. Go back to your grave. Be at peace. Shinzaburo, come outside and look upon me. Look upon me and tell me you think I'm a ghost. I cannot come outside. Shinzaburo, don't you want to look upon me? Don't you want to hold me in your arms? Kiss me? More than anything else in the world. Then come outside to me, my love, and I am yours forever and ever. Come inside to me, and I will be yours for as long as we both may live. 
I'm sorry, mistress, but all the ways are barred. Not even a mouse hole has been left unsealed. There is not a way for us to get in. What are we going to do, Yone? If I cannot get to him, very shortly my spirit will fade away into the eternal darkness. Come, we will try again tomorrow. You will work on Master Shinzaburo, and I will work on that treacherous servant of his. And so, true you came to the house of Sen each night. She pleaded with him to let her enter. But the samurai, though his heart was breaking, would not open the door or come out to her. Please, Shinzaburo, do my tears mean nothing to you? Every tear is as precious as gold to me. They remind me of your name, Morning Dew. Meanwhile, Yone haunted poor Tomazo. Tomazo! Again, go away, Yone, go away! No, I won't go away. I'll come every night until you unbar the way to your master's house. But I cannot betray my master. What's worse, to betray your master or to endure a lifetime of my nightly visits? But soon you will fade away into the eternal darkness. You and your mistress, too. Master Yusai told me. What does he know, that fool? True. Every day my mistress and I grow paler and paler. Soon we will be like Will of the Wisps then mere shadows, and finally nothing at all. But do not be deceived, Timozo, for while my shape may fade, my hatred for you will never die. No, no, leave me alone. So by the time I'm through, your master will have thrown you out, your wife will have left you, and your children will hate you. And all of that will be like nothing, for I can and will do far worse. Worse? What could be worse than my master throwing me out, my wife leaving me, and my children's hatred? Don't worry, I'll think of something. Maybe a nice case of boils. No, please, you mustn't. Then unbar the door. I cannot. You can. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I... Can you really do all those things you just said? Of course. You must be very powerful indeed. You have no idea. Show me. Make a bowl of rice appear. Not bad. And if you can make a bowl of rice appear, I suppose you can make other things appear as well. Certainly. What would you like? Oh, say, golden coin. Look in your shirt pocket. Gold, gold. Real, genuine, solid, delicious gold. Fool's gold would have been more appropriate. Now how about a chest full of gold coins? Don't get greedy. Greedy? You're asking me to betray my master, to lose my honor, and you talk about my being greedy? Suppose I do what you ask. Suppose I take the sacred text away, and suppose something unfortunate happens to him. Then what will become a Tomozo? It will be hard, if not impossible, to find another master like him. One so kind, so loyal, so generous. So gullible. One who gives me and my wife our own house to live in, one who feeds us so well. In fact, I might not be able to find another master at all. Then what will happen to us? We'll become beggars on the street. My wife and children will suffer All hard right, work. all right. How big of a chest do you require? Oh, nothing too big. Just something of sufficient size so that if I cannot find another position that pleases me, I can buy a house to live in and food to eat. Something about this, no. this, this thing should do. Go to sleep, Timozo. And tomorrow when you wake up, there will be a chest of gold just that size beside your bed. But by tomorrow night, the way to your master's house must be unbarred and the golden Buddha no longer around his neck. Don't worry, you can count on me. I'm not worried, Tomozo. For now that you've made a bargain with me, I can do whatever I will. No, no! So if you fail me, by dawn the next day, it won't be gold in that chest I'm bringing you, but pieces of your body. For I will tear you in from limb, suck out all of the marrow in your body, and drink your blood. Do you understand me? Yes, yes, I understand. Good. And so, Tomozo agreed to betray his master for a chest full of gold. And the next day, he set about this evil task. What are you doing with that text? I'm going to replace it. This strip seems to be torn and faded, and I'm afraid it may no longer prove effective. Very good. Just make sure there's a new one placed there by tonight. Oh, don't worry, master. By the way, how is your golden Buddha doing? What do you mean, how's it doing? I mean, is it in a safe place? 
It's around my neck. Where else should it be? But have you had it clean lately? Had it purified in water? Why not? Should I? Of course you should. These charms must be taken care of or they will lose their power. You'd better give it to me so I can take it to Master side and have him bless it again. Very well, if you think it's necessary. Oh, I do, I do. You are a good and faithful servant. Please, Master, don't say that. But it's true, you are. Here, Master, before I go drink this. What is it? Just a little something to help you nap this afternoon. Very good. Now go. Goodbye, Master. I'm so tired. Forever. And so, Thomas, that faithless servant, took the golden Buddha and buried it in the field. Then he went to hid in his room. As for Shinjibaro, he was so tired, and the potion that Tom was already given was so strong, that he slept until it was well after dark. So you? But how? Finally, my love, you have come to your senses and unbarred the door. The door? Tomazo? Tomazo! Don't call for Tomazo, my lord. What do we need him for? After all, it has been so many nights since we have been alone together. No, keep away. You can't resist me, Shinzaburo. The Golden Buddha? Tomozo! Why do you continue to waste time calling for Tomozo? He's not going to answer you. He knows you're meant to be together. Now kiss me, my love, and forget all your fears. Forget all those stories that evil doctor and that awful Messiah told you. Look only at me, and think of our love that will last forever and ever. Soon. Shinzaburo. Now, our story is almost finished. The very next morning, just after dawn, Tomozo ran to his master's house. Master? Master, are you all right? Master, answer me, please. Master? 